throw the hands up there, hands are key up there for the homework. Again, if you think about perimeter as kind of like how many little toothpicks would we have to go around the shape to make it to like make that shape? So like the perimeter in figure one would be four, four sides. Um, then for two, would you guys get perimeter so distance around? Get eight. Three, would you get twelve? Four, and we're already kind of catching the pattern here. And then 20. So again, that's the distance around the outside. Um, so describing a pattern in the, in the perimeter. So there's a pattern, obviously, that's going there. It's going up by how much each time? So it's going up by four. Add four each time. Now, this next one, I'm wondering if you guys, without having to draw out or Count out. What if I wanted to know how how much the perimeter to be in the twentieth figure? So we're going all the way up to building a twentieth figure, and obviously, I don't want you guys to draw figures six, seven, eight, all the way up to twenty. So I have a few hands here. Kate, what do you think? Twenty times four. Twenty times four. You guys agree? Twenty times four. Yeah, so realizing that there might be a pattern that we can find between which figure number were figure one, and then it's four, figure two it's eight, figure three it's 12. So we're just multiplying the figure number by four. So the first time there's that single shape, and then every time we're just adding on another four. So it's gonna be 20 times four. So then that would be 80. So, Noticing that there's a lot of different things you can do with these patterns. And they can ask you different questions about them. You don't have to be um, like afraid when it's saying, oh, the 20th gosh, I'm gonna have to be doing a lot of drawing. Sometimes there's a shorter way to go about that. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk about something called conditional statements. And you've heard these statements before. Um, you use these all the time in everyday like, language. It's called an if-then statement as well. Um, what the definition of a conditional statement is, it has a hypothesis and a conclusion. So it's a logical statement. With hypothesis makes you think of science and a conclusion. And hypothesis maybe in science has a slightly different definition. I think it's pretty similar. But the way we think about it in math is that if I say if something's going to happen, so if it's nice outside or yeah, if the weather's nice, then we will go outside. Hypothesis is the if it has to, the weather has to be nice. So if hypothesis, then conclusion. So the if part of it's called the hypothesis, and obviously that's not really a sentence there. So the hypothesis is kind of like the first half that we're kind of making kind of a guess or what needs to happen, and then we make a conclusion. So 
So, it says all monkeys have tails. So that's our statement. We want to instead write it in conditional form. So I want to break this up into two parts. So just rather than saying all monkeys have tails, I'm going to say if it is a monkey, then what? In regards to this statement, then it's going to what? Have a tail. So if it is a monkey, then it has a tail. A less fun one to talk about would be um, the 90 degree should be maybe 90 degree angles or right angles. So if an angle is 90 degrees, then it is right. So the first has to happen in order for the second to be even worth talking about. So if it's not a monkey, then we don't have to discuss whether or not it has a tail in this case. If it's not a 90 degree angle, then we don't have to talk about whether or not it's right. So we're going to talk about that in some of these statements. We're going to start doing some flipping around with them as well. Um, I have kind of a funny video to go with this, um, talk about the monkeys having tails. Um, with being a mom of kids, I watch a lot of bad TV. Um, so um, one of them, in, and I don't think it's that bad, so I, I think it's kind of fun, is the show Veggie Tales. If you've ever seen it. Um, they're like little vegetables that tell like, like positive stories. So um, I have a Veggie Tales video. How do you talk about the monkeys and tails? Um, and I want to talk about it because it really, I mean, as the total dorky math teacher in me, as soon as I saw this video, I was like, oh my gosh, it's totally if-then statements and rearranging it and kind of what really makes sense. Now they sing really fast, they talk really fast, so I'll probably break it down at the end, but it's maybe still sort of enjoyable. We'd rather play watch the details than listen to me talking. So, Amy, hold this up. See if this link actually works. Yeah, I have a tail. 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 Yeah, I have a tail.
She's trying to help him figure out the difference between a monkey and an ape. So just saying something doesn't have a tail, um, if it has a tail, obviously we probably all have, or those of you guys who have pets, we have pets with tails. We don't have monkeys at our house. Um, so just flipping this statement around isn't enough to have it be true. Um, so if it's monkey, then it has a tail. And you might even know of a counter example to that. There might be a monkey that exists that doesn't actually have a tail. Or there might be a monkey that exists that lost its tail in some sort of unfortunate monkey incident. But there, I mean, you have to think about the fact that an if-then statement might have loopholes, but also we're going to talk about what happens when we kind of flip things around. So, um, and there's some different words we're going to use with this. You want to take good notes on this because this is a lot of our homework tonight um, is what these different words are. And they get really, really confusing. So like the word negation, like you might realize that that means like the opposite. But with if then statements, sometimes it's kind of confusing. So, um, and we're gonna learn other vocab words called converse, inverse, and contrapositive. And I'll warn you guys, tonight's homework is gonna be quite a bit of writing because you're gonna be writing a sentence for each of these. Um, so um, I will try to give you guys some time to work on homework, but I also have um, a kahoot for us today to go with this. So, um, but take good notes and then um, hopefully, um, Hopefully this won't be a tough assignment. It's just going to be like kind of longer in terms of writing. So a negation is basically the opposite of a statement. Basically, you're adding the word not. Now, I feel like there might be a few like social studies teachers out there who love to add not to a question and make it confusing, like a multiple choice question, which of these is not, you know, one of the solutions. And then the solution in the, the choices has the word not in it. And you're like, oh my gosh, there's like double negatives. That's kind of that idea. So sometimes you have to really think about this. So the shape is a square. The shape is not a square. So that's like be, be the completely opposite of that. So the negation of that. So there's either the shape is a square, the shape is not a square. That's the negation. So those are complete opposite statements. So kind of the idea that it is a monkey or it's not a monkey. There's not like a lot of play between those two. The angles are not congruent. What would be the negation to that? The double negative. 
We're going to say not not congruent. What happens when it's a double negative? Comes positive. So the angles are congruent. So we're going to use this negation on the back side of the paper. So if you guys want to flip it over, and I might just break real quick here to make sure it's clear. You don't want to do not, not. Just cancel each other out. All right. So, our conditional statement here is if a dog is a Great Dane, then it is large. Does everyone know what a Great Dane is? It's a really giant dog. Um, we could even use the monkey statement here if we'd prefer. Should we go with monkeys or Great Danes? What should we talk about? You guys have a preference? Whenever. Okay. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I was on a run yesterday. I ran into six huge dogs on a walk, like with three people. So they each had two dogs and they were ginormous. They were all really fluffy, so I stopped. And, and then the lady offered to take a picture with me So, and the dogs. So they were lots of fluff, but no Great Danes. There was a Great Pyrenees. So if a dog is a Great Dane, then it is large. So for the most part, we agree with this statement. Now you might say, well, what if the Great Dane is a puppy? Um, well, it's going to get large, so we'll kind of let go with that. So that's the conditional statement we're going to start off with. What we're going to do is rewrite this statement a bunch of different ways, kind of the same way we could with the monkey. So if it is a monkey, um, then it has a tail. Or which way did Bob and Larry? Yeah, so we'll say um, if it is a monkey, then it has a tail. And we'll talk about how kind of Bob and Larry got confused with that when they switched things around. So what the converse does, so again, these are ones you're going to want to write down because I forget them. Like when I'm not, when I haven't taught this since last year, I forget the difference between these because I don't usually call them those things. So the converse is where you switch the if then parts. So remember, it's if the hypothesis, then the conclusion. We're going to flip those in this case. So we leave the if then there, and we switch the other parts. Now sometimes in order to sound like a, like a proper English speaker, which didn't sound very proper, you might want to switch where like the, the pronouns are as well. So rather than saying if it is large, then the dog is a great day, you might want to say if the dog is large. So we're going to kind of flip it. We're flipping the if-then parts. If the dog is large, then it is a great thing. Now you might say, wait a minute, I know large dogs that aren't great things. So there might be, some of these statements might not be true. So if the dog is large, then it's a great thing. That's not necessarily true. Like, I don't know if you know Mrs. Meeks yet, you guys have met her. She's got one of those giant um, mastiff dogs. So he's like this big moose of a dog. Yeah, um, Irish but yeah, Irish wolfhounds are those super tall, they kind of scraggly looking dogs. There's actually one that lives in Random Lake that I see walking all the time. And they look like almost like a small horse. So like, if the dog is large, then it's a great day. That may not be true. Like I said, I saw a great Pyrenees. That's like those big, big white fluffy dogs and he was um, he was large but he was not a great Dane. So the statement might not be true. So it's, we're just switching the if then parts. That's all we're doing with it. And we'll do we'll do one more example with the monkeys as well just to make sure you guys understand. So if it really bugs you, you can write false. I know what, well, I know of an example and we just gave a few counter examples that may not be a true statement. The next one is the inverse, and this one we negate both. So we talked about the word um, negation. This, this time we're gonna negate both parts. So 
we're going to go back to the original statement, and we're going to make them both negative. So we're going to say not in both parts. So if the dog is not a great day, then it is not large. So we put a not in both parts. This one's kind of the same statement as the last one. I can think of dogs that aren't Great Danes that are large. So if the dog is not a Great Dane, again, Irish Wolfhound, Mrs. Weeks, Giant Dog Duke. I mean, we know of dogs that are not Great Danes, but they happen to be large as well. And then finally, the contrapositive is where you negate them both and you switch. So it's kind of like putting these two together. So negate and switch. This is basically a converse and an inverse. So I'm basically taking the converse and putting not in there. So if the dog is not large, then it is not a great game. I guess now right away just because it's easy to use. Now your book will use some like non-math examples, but they might use math examples as well. Oh, and so if the dog is not large, then it's not a great date. So I come if any dog I find that's a small dog, so not large is probably not a great date either. So that's probably true. All right, so we're gonna use the monkey example. Let's use um, the example we started with on the front. So if it is a monkey, then it has a tail. So if you want to write this down, you can. You can follow it along otherwise. And it will give enough space. All right, so for the most part, I think basically what we know is this is probably true. If it is a monkey, then it has a tail. That's what the lady at the zoo kind of was trying to get at, I think, to um, Larry when she told him that. So this is the if-then statement. So the first one is the converse. So the converse would be to flip the if-then parts. So if it has a tail, then it's a monkey. In the video, there was a cow standing there, pretty clearly not a monkey. He had a tail, he was not a monkey. So this statement is probably gonna be false most times. If the first one is true, the second one's probably gonna be false. The next one is inverse. And that's negating both of them. So if it is not a monkey, then it has no tail. So 
So if it's not a monkey, so I come up on a cow in a field, he's got a tail, but he's, he's not a monkey, this doesn't make sense. So if it's not a monkey, then it has no tail. There's plenty of things that have tails that aren't monkeys. And then finally, the contrapositive is the two together. Well, but if it's not a monkey, so if it is an ape, then it has no tail. So that one, it could be false. Yeah, so typically the converse and inverse, if the first one is true, these are typically going to be false. So when he was rearranging the words and trying to flip them around, he was using all these different versions of the statements as trying to show that they're not always going to work. So not every if-then statement is true. So the last one is we're going to make, put both of these two together. If it has no tail, then it's not a monkey. And again, if you're looking at the monkey in 8K, you try to tell the difference. Maybe the statements were okay, but we want to make sure it's clear. Okay, so what we're going to do is do a Kahoot with um, these three types of Things. So they're going to ask you, give me the converse of this statement. And so you're going to probably want your notes out until you're really comfortable with this. Um, so, and some of them will be math. Most of them are kind of more just like non-math questions. So if you guys get your device out. <laughs> I know if you guys watching the video, this is not live, so you will not be able to join the Kahoot. You can play along. Send you a piece of candy in the mail. <laughs> it would be funny just to get a sucker in the mailbox with like an envelope. Well, yeah. how what did you know my address? One of my friends is like my boys, like crazy aunt. Yeah, she like, like, you know, you guys all have like that person in your life. I hope you do that like buys you the weird stuff. Like she bought my kids like bean bag um, poop emoji pillows one year for Christmas, because why wouldn't you? And um, so she's kind of a crazy aunt lady in their life. And she, during COVID, just to be funny, she sent them like a Nerf football with just their name written on it and like a sticker for the stamp. Like, so it wasn't in a box, it just a Nerf football shows up in our mailbox with their name on it. So, and it was just to be funny. And so it was really cute. Like, so you can really mail anything. Like it's actually, so I'm totally making labeling myself right now. So I have a hydro flask if you haven't noticed. And when your hydro flask breaks, you can actually just tape the top and send it back to the hydro flask. You don't even have to put it in the in a box. You can just send it that way, which is so weird. Like so the mailman has to carry. The, and then they send you a new one. But it actually has to not, you have to send back the old one in so not pretty sweet. All right, are we all in? I think we got to be. Okay. So again, guys, it's kind of a lot of reading. Um, hopefully the questions are long enough that you guys can not feel like you're speed reading. Sorry, not the most fun food on the planet, but we'll go. Everyone in, sorry. So what's the conclusion? So we have if hypothesis, then conclusion. What's the 
conclusion. If Mary is allergic to dogs, then she's allergic to poodles. You're probably overthinking this if you're thinking for a long time. All right, so the if is the hypothesis. This is the hypothesis and then the conclusion. So the conclusion would be is Mary's logic to Pumas. Other things might be true, but that would be the conclusion. So which is the hypothesis? animal lives on land, then it's not a fish. <clears throat> so the first part is the hypothesis, and then the conclusion is the second part. My son's allergic to cats, and once when we were, when he was like in first grade, we got an email from his teacher that she overheard him telling someone, I'm allergic to cats, but not catfish. <laughs> so, like, that was because um, we eat catfish. <laughs> like, first grade mentality. Oh, this is like a, a riddle. So, if there was a train crash and then every single person died, how could two people survive? This is like a funny riddle. This is not actually. Um. Oh, my God. All right. Does anyone explain it? What's the key word here? Yeah, Evelyn? Every single person. They didn't mean like they didn't mean like you're a single person, you're a single person, they mean them as like they're not married. So um, every single person. So that would be the worst I mean. Oh I don't know how that would work in a train crash that you figures out who the single people are, but all the single people died. The married people made it. It's fake news. Mm -hmm. Well, let's be a riddle. If Tony gets a raise, then he takes a vacation, what's the converse? So look up on your, your sheet what the converse would be. Sorry, those are, they give you a minute. Hopefully you should read it back quickly. So the converse is when you flip the if then parts. And again, remember the converse is one of them that just might not make sense. If Tony takes a vacation, then he gets a raise. If he's sweet, if that happens, typically that's not the case. Like, jobs might not even like that that you're taking a vacation. So, um, so again, that doesn't necessarily have to be true. Don't let that throw you off. All these lead changes. All right. Contra positive this time. Contra positive. That was the last of the three we had. Is Miss Recess? How do you get recess every once in a while? Somewhat. I thought it would miss it a lot more. More Miss Nap Time from kindergarten or whatever grade that was. They like, stopped letting us do nap time. Catch <laughs> if they're right now there. Be like, okay, everyone, lay your head down for like a 15 minute nap. That's a problem. So the inverse this time, 
Ben doesn't graduate, then he doesn't pass his micro class as a class. Inverse. So that inverse is negating both. And since they both had doesn't in them, negating them makes them positive. So it makes it, um, so just taking out the doesn't. Tomorrow is Tuesday, yes. and yesterday was Monday. Is this, yeah. is this true? Oh, I like to add that. Yes. Oh, yeah, I got that. Yes. Okay, think about it. I, obviously, this is not today. So, if tomorrow is Tuesday, so here we are. Tomorrow is Tuesday. It's saying yesterday was Monday. Where are we then? Like in some weird Tuesday. alternate day. Fake day. No. No. That doesn't work that way. Sorry, another riddle there, so it kind of got thrown in there. But, oh, we lost one of our leaders with that. I No. Oh, we didn't. Uh, we did not do this one yet. You want to make a good guess? Oh. Or we can skip it. No, no yes. Skip it. Skip yes. yes. it. Rules of definition of property. It's simple. I have to have more. Torin, I don't know. Look, you the perfect still. Did you make a good guess? Did you put anything down? No. Make a good guess. I do. So it's, sorry, it's the one we have not yet talked about. We talked about indirective reasoning. We're going to talk about deductive reasoning tomorrow. Sorry. And inductive is using observations. Deductive is actually using like facts. Oh, Torin still stayed out there. Oh, lucky duck. All right. <clears throat> So counterexample to this statement, no mammals live in the ocean. So counterexample, no mammals live in the ocean. Uh, turtles. So it says a snake is not a mammal, a dog does not live in the ocean, a whale is a mammal and lives in the ocean, or a robin neither lives in the ocean nor is a mammal. A dog does not. So the counter example is that a whale is a mammal and he lives in the ocean. So you don't really have to know too much about mammals or not mammals. I think we have 19 in here today. <laughs> this is a weird if then statement. If John runs downhill, then it'll rain. <laughs> What has to be true? I mean, if you're Oh my God. Let's see something that is. Yes, yeah, so what I was going to go with. <laughs> so, the reason why. Um, we don't know for sure that John's going to run downhill. He can decide not to run downhill. Maybe then he won't cause it to rain. I don't know what kind of superheroes John has. Um, but then, so if it doesn't rain, so if this doesn't happen, because this has to happen in order for this to happen. Why? I don't know. It doesn't make much sense. But so if this doesn't happen, that means that couldn't have happened. I know it's bizarre, so sometimes it's kind of, oh, oh big, oh, big alley, big jump. <laughs> Big lead change there. This is another riddle. If you add two letters to this word, it becomes shorter. What's the word? Looking at the choices will help. 
to read the answers. Jeez. Money. Money. We have just another um, vocab word and, um, and then um, an example to talk about. I will tell you guys that this type, this statement, this biconditional statement, ends up being the most missed question on our next test. I'll tell you guys that right now. There's probably going to be one question with it, but for whatever reason, biconditional just doesn't stick for students. Um, I always remember that it's bad, and I try to tell people this is going to be on the test. Obviously, it's early in the chapter, but we review, and I mentioned it then, too. Um, and so to write something as a biconditional is it's just, for whatever reason, it's tough for students to kind of grasp why you would do that or how to do that. So in a biconditional statement, both the conditional and the converse are true. So. I'll write that first. This has to be true about a biconditional statement. So both the conditional and converse are true.
So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our if statement, if then statement, to be an if and only if. So we would not be able to write the statement, if it is a monkey, then it has a tail, as a biconditional statement. Because the converse is not true. If it has a tail, then it is a monkey. We know that that's not the case. So you wouldn't write then, if it is a, or it is a monkey, if and only if it has a tail. It doesn't work both ways. So the statement has to be a special type of statement. So in order to do biconditional, both parts have to be true. And so this is a pretty hefty statement here. So it says, if the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees, then the angles are supplementary. This is a true statement. The sum of two measures of the measure of two angles is 180. This is the angles are supplementary. This is our conditional statement. This is a true statement. So that's true. We're going to now write the converse of that statement. So that means we flip the if then parts. If two angles are supplementary. know what supplementary angles are, then the sum of the angles is 180. I took out the measures. I don't think we really need to, I guess that's a little longer than I wanted it to be. So if two angles are supplementary, are the sum of the angles 180 degrees? Is that also true? Yeah, that's also a true statement. So what we're saying now, so since this is also true, since these are both true, we're able to write a new statement. It's called a biconditional. We take the if-then part out and put if and only if in the middle. So I take the, like, the hypothesis and the conclusion and put the if-then in, the, or if and only if in the middle. <clears throat> So and I, I'm going to still write it even maybe a little bit shorter. So the sum of two angles is 180. That's going to be the first part. So I'm taking the if out of it. So no more if. The sum of two angles is 180 degrees. If and only if sum of two angles is 180 degrees, if and only if, what would the second half be? The angles are supplementary. So the best way to kind of show this, I think, so if hypothesis, then conclusion. So if H, then C. So H implies C. What the if and only if does is we can do H if and only if C. So it's basically saying this goes both ways. So the arrow can go either way. They kind of imply each other. Any questions there at all? Okay, so we're now going to work on our homework. A little bit more time than usual, given that we don't have AR today. Um, so today in AR, you guys have ACP, um, which just means your time is basically being used to work on um, college career planning, um, big tasks you have to take. So um, it's something that, that time is used for, like taken away from you guys just once a week. So all the other four days are yours, but um, today is, is not. So, um, so you won't have that time. So I want to give you guys time for homework. 
Um, obviously, you can do homework at home as well, but I know things come up in the evening, so trying to get as much done as you guys can. I know Ms. Miller talked to a few of you guys. If you guys wanted to go down by her, you're welcome to. Um, if the whole class wanted to, we could work outside. It's a little wet, unless you wanted to sit on the sidewalk, but I think we'll probably, unless everyone's dying to go, 